stop. This is a different video than the black tank flush video you just watched. So what we're talking about today is monster energy drinks. We're going to consume 62 of these in the next 30 seconds. Now, we're going to talk about winterizing a Salem Hemisphere travel trailer. Um, that being said, we're doing one particular floor plan. They're all going to be a little bit different as far as location. So we're going to cover some of that today. Um, questions? Try to give us a buzz, but this video is hopefully going to answer most of your questions for you. So the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is find the low point drain for your camper. We're going to just loosen up. There's um, a little cap in here, and we'll show this in a different video a little bit better. And you will get a little water pressure spray. That is nice. So there we go. There's one. We're going to take that completely out. I'm getting my coachman shirt completely covered. There we go. There's one. And we're going to hit the second one here now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to the hot water heater. So we got these two caps out. Okay, that's what we're trying to get out. So, that's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to tell you to store these in the outside shower, but we're going to come back to that here at the very end. So don't skip to the end yet, and don't stop halfway through this video. Let's go up here to the uh, hot water heater. So we're going to come up to the hot water heater, which on this floor plan is all the way at the very front. Drop the hot water heater cover off. Make sure our electric element, which is the little black switch down here, is in the off position. We're going to get our socket wrench, which is a 1 and 1 16th. We're going to hit the top here. We're going to relieve a little bit of pressure off of this. And we're just going to take our anoid rod out. Now, my opinion, buy a new anoid rod each year. Why? Because it's a lot cheaper to buy an anoid rod than it is to buy a hot water heater. This one doesn't look too bad. I'd actually run that one again. But if you have an anode rod that's got the pitting all up and down the sides of this, and we'll do a separate video on that, then I'd just buy another one. That being said, once you've got the pressure off there, if you pull this valve open, this is going to allow it to drain out faster. So, Mark's going to crawl in here, and I'm going to crawl from the other side to try to show you how to bypass the back of the hot water heater. All right, guys. So we're going to use a number two square tip bit to take off whatever panel is covering the hot water heater. The easiest way to do this is look on the outside, find out where the hot water heater is, come inside, and you're going to figure out where that access panel is. You're usually going to see a couple of screws holding it in place. On the back of the hot water heater, you're going to see two white valves. Okay, Turn them from their current position. There'll be one on a cold side, there'll be one on a hot side, which will be labeled on the back of the hot water heater and on the PEX line itself, which will be blue for cold, red for hot. Just turn them from their current position, leave them that way until the summer. We're gonna do separate uh, dewinterizing videos come the springtime. So, this is how we're going to bypass the hot water heater. Now let's go inside and connect our water pump to uh, some antifreeze. All right. Now that we've located our water pump, which way we're going to do that is simply turn the water pump on and listen for that little vibration noise. We've decided that on this 326, we think it's behind this door. Now, smart people would look before they started shooting the video. Hey, Mark, we're all right. So we're just going to toss that off to the side. Sometimes taking the bathroom door off helps, but I guess only if you're shooting a video. So we're going to disconnect the water pump inside of here, okay? Mark, I don't know how much light you got on that. Can you see pretty good now? What we're looking for is this little glass bowl right here. That's the side that's coming from the holding tank. So we're just going to disconnect this line. If you want to have a rag handy, you can. Um, we're going to have a little bit of water coming out sometimes from that. All right. So now that we got that disconnected, you can purchase one of these hoses from our parts department. You can make one yourself, your choice there. You can also buy a bypass kit that'll allow you to uh, 
do this a little bit faster the following year because then it'll install a T-valve. I'm going to push Mark out of the way so I can get in here to do what I need to to get this thing hooked up correctly so it doesn't leak. All right, now that we've got the water pump hose connected to our gallon of antifreeze, go outside, screw those caps. Remember we had those little plastic caps that we took off the low point drains? Put them back on. Then turn your water pump on and it's going to pressurize the inside of the trailer. You're going to see it draw down some of the antifreeze. Once we hear that pump stop running, I think we're just about there. We're going to go ahead and open up the sink faucets. We're going to run until we get a nice solid stream of pink out. We're going to do that on the hot. We're going to do that on the cold and the hot. There we go. All right. You're going to want to repeat that with every faucet inside this coach, including your toilet. You're going to run that until you get a solid stream of pink and then just leave a little bit extra. Now, we're going to assume that you know how to turn the shower on and things like that. We're going to go outside and show you the two most common problems people forget when they winterize. Let's go outside. Inside we said there was two problems. There's actually three. The most common problem is people not consuming enough monster during this. Open up your outside shower. Turn your hot and cold water on there. So we see pink coming out of there. We got pink coming out of there. Then we can get the shower door to close. Next thing you're going to do is pop this little screen cover off here. And you're just going to flip this up, just grabbing right there, pull that off. Now Mark, take a step back because this is going to shoot out. There's a little nipple inside of here that you're going to depress. Yep, that's good, clean pink coming out now. Now we know this trailer is completely winterized. All right, guys, at this point, we're going to want you to dump the holding tanks in a safe area. Make sure you're not just spreading it in the middle of, like, the highway. Dump the holding tanks, dump the freshwater tanks, um, and then go ahead and either put that anoid rod away in a plastic bag or something like that. Um, also, please note that we were using RV antifreeze, not antifreeze for a car. We're using RV winter band. Um, on top of that, what else are we forgetting, Mark? Oh, do not use air pressure to blow out the water lines. We had a separate video already on that. Um, it's nothing but problems. Um, so we're gonna dump the black and the gray tank. Just gonna dump everything out right onto the ground here because we're in the parking lot and it's a new unit. And we're gonna dump the uh, fresh water tank all the way at the back corner here, which I'm not trying to skinny through there right now. So. That being said, if this video helped you out, please get on Amazon and send us a case of Monster Zero uh, calorie ones, the black ones we like, the white ones we like. No, hit like, hit subscribe, uh, follow our videos. We're gonna be doing a lot more of these winterization videos. We're gonna try to do one for every type of RV on our lot, every brand. Tries the keyword there, guys. So give us a call, 1-800-232-3279 if you have any other questions. Take care, have a great day.